Welcome to this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3, and thanks for joining us. And joining Sam and me uh, is uh, a guy from CHS. He's a junior varsity coach, and it's Chris Bottomley. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Basketball, uh, right around the corner. Yep. November 7th is our official first start date. Okay. And that is a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday? or It'll be a Monday, yep. Okay. Midnight? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no midnight we, madness? We, don't, we don't go out and, and do a midnight madness. Um, we'll go right after school on a Monday. <laughs> okay. And first game is November 24th? Yes, November, our annual Union County um, Connorsville game. And um, we'll have a probably a red and white scrimmage, I'm sure, that first week, like probably a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll come back with um, scrimmage. I'm not sure who we're scrimmaging this year. Knightstown, I'm assuming. Um, I believe so, yes. The following week, and mm -hmm. then we start that um, following uh, Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk more about basketball in a few minutes, but um, Spartan Sports this week, zero. All we have are the awards programs. High schools is Wednesday night at 6.30, and then middle schools is Thursday at 6.30, and uh, it's the awards for the fall sports people. Uh, how, are, how are selections made? For the... Or the awards, mm -hmm. awards, and, and things. They're voted on by the players. Okay. Um, within on the the teams, and they vote for. It. However, the coach does it. They can do probably best mental out uh, mental attitude, uh, most improved, and MVP if they choose. And then the players choose those, hmm. and and then they do their tallies after that to figure out who they're um, going to do or who gets the awards. I should say. That's interesting, Sam. That the the players are the ones that make the mm -hmm. selections. Yeah, it is, but. Uh, <laughs> You know they can judge their peers pretty well. They, <laughs> they know who they know who know who's giving it their all and uh, sure. who puts the effort in. And uh, and I think that's okay. And yeah. probably along the way, a little guidance from coaches too. But, uh, yeah, we usually make our guys sign who they vote for as well with their name, mm -hmm. so we can see. So we don't, we don't want a popularity you know contest. Um, we want who was the best MVP and who was the best mental attitude and who was the most improved. And, you know, we want them to think about it and put their name to it yes. um, with that. So it's important, I think, for the kids to choose that. They're with them every day. They're behind the locker room doors where the coaches aren't. Mm -hmm. They do the things like that. So mm -hmm. well, That's interesting. I was wondering how the selections were made because uh, after each sports circle, uh, cycle, why there's the awards program. Sure is. <laughs> so. And they get some awards, you know, at the high school level because somehow, and I, I'm not sure the criteria how they use but they earn points and they can win other awards such as blankets and clocks mm -hmm. um, from out there and I know they get points from varsity and JV and um, I think some of the cheerleaders get like half points for different things and academics is involved as well they get some points okay. for that and that's how they get those awards those bigger awards are handed out from from um, Brent Duncan out there so it's, it's pretty neat I still have my blanket still have my clock so <laughs> do you use that your blankie in here no, I don't use it. It's just folded up. Okay. They're um, not very comfortable sleeping. They're like a wool blanket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of itchy. Yeah. Public's invited at 6.30 again. It's the start time. It's in the auditoriums of the schools. So uh, we hope a lot of folks show up and, uh, and sort of honor these kids because they, they really do work hard. They do. It's a commitment. Um, extracurricular is, is such an um, extra thing that uh, the kids do, and, and, mm -hmm. and they're held at a higher standard. and. and some other students, I think, sometimes, and um, to tackle practice and homework or game nights and homework, and it's not easy sure. um, to be a, a student athlete. And, and you know, I credit them kids that do it because it's a tough job. It's good yeah. preparation for life, though. It, it sure it, is. Uh, multitasking, and uh, it's good for them for when they go off to college, and uh, then once they get out of college into the work world. Yeah, probably the time management of it is the most important aspect of college life and um, um, you know athletics do prepare you for time management that was probably the one of the hardest things to adjust to as a high school to a college student is your time management because you have a little bit more free time mm -hmm. and I think athletics helps you in that nature and plus it makes you a better person in the long run probably make you a better father or, or wife or husband whatever mm -hmm. um, you, you need to do in the long run and you know athletics I think help that with that structure and there's a code of conduct too in there. A code of conduct at the school, yes. yes. They 
they do have um, a contract that they sign or a, a, mm -hmm. not a contract, but a uh, um, disciplinary type deal. And they have to abide by the rules. Um, they're in a random drug test that they can um, be selected as. And the parents have control. They can actually have their um, um, students tested any time that they want to when they're okay. coming around. And they can volunteer their own children for that. I'm not sure at all that that sides of it, but I know some of that's in there um, from Brent. But um, yeah, it's 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 a different uh, a different avenue than a regular student. Yes, has to deal with. There's a lot of behind the scenes when it comes to playing sports. Mm -hmm. Plus, their uh, grade point average they have to maintain a. Mm -hmm. certain yeah, they have to pass um, five classes mm -hmm. um, out to high school. I believe that's what it is, and um, uh, to be eligible. And the GPA is gone. I think the old GPA was like. 2.0 back in the day, and now they go by the IHSAA standards with passing five classes. Before we get to more basketball, we football season ended. Uh, sectional Friday night, Pendleton Heights came to town. Both teams were two and seven, Spartans and, and Pendleton Heights. They both averaged during the season around in the mid-teens and mm -hmm. offensive, defensive average of around 30. So it was a very even as far as statistics was concerned. But the Spartans again. Just couldn't get rolling. But Sam, at the end of three, they were only down like seven, 17 to 7, I think. And uh, actually really got right back into that game uh, right before halftime when mm -hmm. uh, they closed within seven. And mm -hmm. I thought that should have given them a lift right. coming out. And I think it did for a while, but Pendleton Heights uh, just seemed to be stronger and wore them down. But uh, really thought that uh, only being down seven, that uh, I liked their chances yes. after halftime. But just wasn't to be. The, the kids gave it their all, as they sure. have all season, and the coaching staff, uh, you know, they, they don't like to lose. They don't mm -hmm. want to lose, but uh, it's one of those things that uh, many times we had seen during the season, Fran, and you, you saw it too, the games that you covered, that yes. uh, um, we would just be uh, outmanned at many positions, size-wise. I know that was a concern when the season began of the small number of, of fellows that, that turned out for mm -hmm. football. And, and younger guys. We didn't have a lot of upperclassmen. Yes. But, uh, played uh, a lot point. of freshmen and sophomore in key positions. So. Good point. Good. So hopefully those kids will stay with it and um, uh, hit the weights in the off season and do other sports. But if they're not uh, doing other sports, hit the weight room and uh, get bigger and stronger for next year. So the footballs and the jerseys and the helmets are being stored, I guess, Chris. Mm -hmm. And they'll come out in August. That's right. <laughs> it's, a, it's time for indoor sport, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, basketball, you, uh, I'm sure, look to last year's freshman team to see what you've got on your JV team this year. Yeah, um, I was kind of looking at some records um, of, of team participation last year, and I think our seventh grade down there, um, the A team finished, um, I think, 10 and, 10 and 5 maybe on the season. Mm -hmm. Um, the, in, the eighth graders finished 15 and one, and um, so they're all moving up one grade. So the incoming freshmen were 15 and one last year. I think our freshman team was 10 and nine last year. So that's our coming to our JV mm -hmm. team, and our JV was nine and 15, I think, last season. Um, and uh, of course, our varsity finished 21 and six last season. So yeah. um, there's our records coming in, and we had some uh, some good talent coming up. Good. Um, middle school coaches are doing a great job um, preparing some kids using the terminology that we're using so it makes things simplified um, and we can start working on skills and, and, and things like that for them. Um, today actually is the uh, 7th and 8th grade tryouts um, Monday and Tuesday this week so okay. um, Coach Brown goes down and, and a couple of other of our assistants are down there and we, uh, we run the, op we run the uh, tryouts for them letting the uh, four um, coaches evaluate um, of our middle school to evaluate the players and, and decide um, who they want to be on the team. And, and in a couple of days, they'll decide what team they're going to be on, the A or B team. So we go through a pretty good process with that. So that's what's going on this week. Okay. And our high school kids are working out in JV. Freshmen are having open gym uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday this week um, with, with us running that as well. So it's a busy week. Yeah. Uh, who, who's coaching uh – at the seventh and eighth grade levels, um, our seventh grade uh, A coach, a red, they call it red and white. Yes. Um, seventh grade red coach is um, is a 
It'll come to you. It'll come to me in a second. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta get him here. Um, it's Brian Munchell. Okay. And the eighth grade red coach is Chris Silcott. Mm -hmm. The uh, seventh grade white is John Reynolds, and the eighth grade white is Chris Bloom. So uh, we had a great, great group of guys down there um, doing those things, and I think we have some assistants this year helping them. Um, Joe Daniels, I believe, is helping this year. He's an ex Spartan as well. Yes. Played some basketball at Davis College. He's back in town, um, volunteering his time with, with the younger kids, which is great. Um, and I, I know there's a, um, a Mark Sollenberger, I think, is helping also, I believe, down there. He did last year. Um, I know I'm leaving off some guys, but I sure. apologize. But, well, um, but we got a great group of guys down there doing yes. the right things and, and helping out what we're doing right now. So I'm pretty excited to, um, when we get those guys, their freshman and sophomore years, they've got some knowledge about yes. what we're teaching. How many youngsters are on the team? Um, I think we're going to push around from freshmen. Oh, you you talking about the middle school? Yes, right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what they'll keep. I think they'll keep around um, 10 to 12 okay. players per team, um, depending on, uh, you know, where we're at. If we have some kids that are borderline um, bubble, um, why not keep them? Sure. Um, and, and work with them and give them an opportunity to get better. So. Um, we usually reach around that 10 to 12. So you can sure. keep as many as you want. There's no CHSA step into this thing? No, and it, it's, it's, it's smart, too, because why would you keep 15 players um, at that level? And that would be tough to play them. Their mm -hmm. quarters are short. Okay. Um, it would not be fair to the kids um, to not get as much touches and as much playing time as they probably could, even though um, practice is more important than the play. But... Um, they just wouldn't get as much time that they should they, they need to get. Um, it wouldn't be fair to the kids at the bottom of the bench to the kids at the top of the sure. bench. So it's better to have a good number like 12 to 10 um, where you're still getting a lot of reps, getting more touches. Um, when we're doing our skill work, they can you know, work on a lot more and have a lot more space and sure. get things done. So They play at the sports arena? Yeah, they play at the Spartan Arena, at the middle school. Spartan Arena, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And... Um, their season, I think, takes off on probably November, I'm guessing, 19th or something. I think I've seen I think I've got it written down so. here somewhere. The um, winter sports schedule begins. Uh, the boys' white team opens at Randolph Southern on uh, November the 19th, as you say. And their first toll game will be against Brookville at uh, Brookville St. Michael's on, the, on November 18th. Got here, so uh, they open on November 10th. Right, and they do a good job down there. That we need to, um, you know, our fans get in support, get a little taste of it maybe before the high school starts, and it's mm -hmm. good to go uh, watch the middle school play and, and see how hard them kids are working to where they're at. They put on a great show. The the the, the dancers and the chillers did a good job too, and I know we're always um, Carnesville is always known for having a great introduction before our varsity comes out and does some stuff. And the middle school does a very similar thing. Good. So they try to do some stuff. They have their music and their dancers line up and the kids run through it. And um, it, it's a great a, a great atmosphere as well for them. And, and uh, it's exciting to go down there and watch them a little bit and see the excitement for them as much as it is for us as a high school still. <laughs> so. any, um, any kids that uh, are growing quickly, you see any bigger kids coming on? Are we at any 6'10 uh, transfers? Or? No. It, you know, Sam, every year we're wishing that would happen. Uh, um, so, you know, it, it, I don't know why. They, they've, they've stopped getting big on us. So, we're gonna, so we need to start bringing some, some big boys in, I think, to help us out. We're missing them 6'10". We are. Guys. But, but um, on the other hand, I see our kids playing bigger than, bigger than they are a lot of times. And they play yeah. with a lot of heart and, uh, at, at all levels. That's right. You know, it's, it's the toughness. We try to be as tough as we can with our kids and, and showing toughness on the floor and holding your ground and um, no fear for anybody we play and, and, and doing those kind of things to get you prepared, um, you know, for life because you've got to fight for your job at some point in time too. And so those are the, the, been, the main aspects of it. It isn't just basketball, but we want them to be tough and stand up and fight for what they want. It's good to hear uh, some of the names that you mentioned, uh, former Spartans, you being one of them, and and – I think that's important that in all of our sports that seems like we have a lot of people coaching that uh, actually were a Spartan at one time or another in some sport. And uh, uh, the tradition carries on that way, I think. 
Yeah, we have a lot of pride. I mean, I love where I'm from, and um, you know, I, I love Connorsville and, and the Spartans. And um, I, if you go to games, you'll I go to a lot of games and, and visit and and stop in and watch. You know, every sport um, at least once in the season. I try my best to get there because I support our kids and what they do and the Spartans. And I love seeing our ex players, and some of them are mine now. Ex players <laughs> coming back and. Uh, and coaching sports, so it's it's fun to have them on the sideline and seeing what they've um, learned and how they teach in their style of coaching. We see you at a lot of Lady Spartan games, too, for a particular reason. <laughs> yeah, um, I go to a lot of uh, Lady <laughs> Spartans games. First of all, um, uh, an ex-player of mine from high school is Coach Thompson, so I play with Michael, and, um, and you know, he's the head coach for the girls, obviously, and now I have a daughter who's a sophomore um, that's that's playing, and they've already had their tryouts, and, and They've, I think, got their teams picked, and they're full speed ahead About right now. ten days now. away from, from yeah. this taping for so, their first game. Yeah, I'm excited to go watch the Lady Spartans mm -hmm. root them on this season. Um, you know, they had a rough season last year, so I'm excited about what they'll do this mm -hmm. year. Yeah, a lot of girls, uh, those younger girls, your daughter included, got a lot of valuable varsity minutes as freshmen. So Yeah, and they wasn't ready yet, so it was good experience. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully it'll be a little bit better this year than they were last year, and that's all you can hope for. Exactly. They open on Thursday, November 3rd, right around the corner. Uh, wow. <laughs> that is right around the corner. <laughs> <It> is here. <laughs> they play November, December, January. Uh, their tourney is early in February because, uh, Sam, you, you know why they moved. Well, they the moved it because the um, state championship boys weekend was the same as, I'm sorry, the state championship girls weekend was the same as the boys sectional first sectional weekend so they move the girls basketball ahead a week okay. so that there's a definite break point there that the girls state finals are over and then boys sectional starts and i think that overall is a good thing sense. it used to be that way and and uh that way you know there are especially with with class basketball if if with come tournament time there are still eight schools alive state tournament uh, mm -hmm. for the state finals so those eight schools would have conflict with, with uh, the boys opening around yes. in the sectional. So yes. they separated it, and I think it's a good thing that uh, the state association did. New Palestine is uh, the girls' first opponent here at home. Um, this is a quality sports program in New Palestine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they do a good job over here. they got some great coaches, and they got a good uh, um, feeder program going, and... Um, you know, they're just, I think, in the right place where they got some people from Indy coming to them and living there mm -hmm. and going to school. And that, mm -hmm. it seems like a good school system there. So yeah. They always treat us well when we go over yeah, there. Yeah, they always feed us like kings, that's for <laughs> sure, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I've got here where uh, Chris with the girls on October the 29th will be scrimmaging with Union County. Yeah, I think they scrimmage them every year. Mm -hmm. I, I went last year to watch it, so... Um, We'll see what they can do. And Union County is, um, um, you know, they're doing a good job. They're working hard over there. They got a, I think their new coach has been there two or three years now, and, and um, he's got that program going, I think, in his direction. So I know they've been working hard, and, and Carnesville's a, that scrimmage is important to them. You know, besides getting ready for the season, um, they get to play Carnesville a little bit, so it's exciting for mm -hmm. them. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and uh, as us, us as well, I mean, it's important to see what we're doing and seeing live action because you get tired of beating up on your own teammates every day, so it's good <laughs> to see somebody else. That's right. After they uh, have the New Palestine here on the 3rd, on the 5th, they'll be at Indianapolis Ritter. On the 11th, uh, Fort Mills Mount Vernon they'll be playing. They'll be at Centerville on November the 18th. And on Saturday, on the 19th of November, they'll be home meeting Anderson. So they go on the road right after their opening game for, for a while. Yeah. Tough yeah. schedule that, that they yes. play, and, yes. and it has been, and uh, year in and year out. Mm -hmm. But I think that's good. That, that prepares them for, for tourney time. But well, yeah. Yeah, I believe uh, you're right. They do go on the road for four in a row. We used to always open up with Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. and uh, while opening up with New Pal, isn't easy. I, I think it's better to get a couple games under the belt under their belt before they have to play the Marauders because uh, uh, going in one year and I've told this story before that uh, I believe we were maybe preseason number one when we had April and we went up there and, and got beat right off the bat. I mean yes. they're just uh, they really 
Mount Vernon has a lot of tradition in girls basketball. Yes, yes, they've uh, they played they played real well. So uh, it'll be a, it'll be quite a test for the young ladies and everything. But uh, you're you're a coach, and <clears throat> the type of play that that you do depends on your talent, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we coach the same way all the time. I mean, we're just trying to be hard nosed, um, use what you have to the best of your ability, and we don't expect any more than that mm -hmm. um, as much as you have. But we try to get that hard-nosed defense, um, try to keep opponent from scoring, and maybe try to uh, score on our defense um, and, and do those things. And so, you know, that's just how we go about it, just being hard-nosed and tough and not being scared of anyone or who we go against and, um, and uh, obviously having the mindset that we can beat anybody we play. And, I mean, I think those are very important qualities um, coming in to any game or any sport anything you do in life, so be successful. Sure. The varsity has this tournament during the holidays at Richmond. Do you guys, the junior varsity, they have a tournament of any kind? Yeah, we play. <clears throat> um, it's the wedding, and um, the varsity plays mostly at the Terran Center and at Earlham, mm -hmm. and the JV normally plays at one of the uh, um, side schools. We've played at Hibbard before. Um, we've played at the boys' club up there before, but we usually, we'll get in four games as oh, well okay. in two days. So we'll play two games one day and two games the next day. Well, I didn't realize that you guys played the same yep. schedule. And as a lot of times it's JV teams that are coming with the varsity teams. So wherever they're from, um, sometimes the JV teams comes, they'll come with them. Um, and so we'll play them so they'll still get their tournament, yeah. their play in. Because, you know, we miss those games. Sure. The JV. Sure. And so if we don't, have, we don't play in that tournament, we sure. lose four games. So it's yeah. always nice to have those games. And it keeps you sharp during the holidays, too. It sure does. If you have a long layover, why? It, it's not good. No. no <laughs> we're not off very much with that Christmas tourney. We'll, I think last year we gave the boys off maybe one day or something, you know, right after <laughs> Christmas. So it was tough. And, but we have to be prepared for there. And, and, you know, and our schedule's just as good as, you know, the girls. It's tough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we picked up the Louisville team this year and um, Indianapolis Manual. Um, so we got a tough – a tough road ahead of us. Our schedule just got better than it was last year. A lot of expectations for the varsity this year. And I know you as a JV coach helps prepare um, those kids that move <laughs> up to varsity. And, and many times you'll have some outstanding kids that uh, move up and you lose them and you've got, you're kind of starting over again. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's bittersweet because every practice that we go into with my JV guys, they have one job is try to beat the varsity and take their job. And so it makes for great practices. And, and that's what we try to do um, from my standpoint and, um, is I fight for my kids to try to beat up on Coach Brown's kids every day <laughs> at practice and take somebody's job ahead of them. And I think it makes the varsity better. Um, and so that's what we try to do. Um, it doesn't, and, and if it gets successful for one guy, he takes them from me and moves them up, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And then we bring another guy in and let's beat up on them some more. <laughs> and so that's what we try to do is uh, take somebody's job in front of you. And, um, and I think it drives the varsity to be a little bit better than what they are. And you're uh, uh, a lot of fun to watch. I'll just say that along the <laughs> sidelines that uh, uh, your competitive juices get flowing during those games. And, and uh, uh, you keep a spark lit under those kids. Yeah, I try to. I mean, they are a representation of yourself sometimes out there. So you don't want... Um, them to be uh, um, rude and mean to any referees or anything. So we like to teach that discipline mm -hmm. and then um, be competitive. Um, I w it's just not basketball. It's just life itself. And that's something we try to drive and teach every day is, is be competitive and for what you want, stand up for what you want. And, um, and we, we do those things. I hope I coach that way. I hope they take it for the rest of their life. So I would think so. <laughs> A couple of three seasons ago, the junior varsity games became longer. They went to seven-minute quarters right. instead of six. So if, whose decision was that? I, I guess it came from Matches Double A, and, and okay. I've heard a rumor that they're thinking about taking it back again. Um, hmm. And the, the reason is, is because of late nights with homework and things. So um, they're thinking about tuning it back again. Um, you back know, to six. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I hope not. I like the seven minutes because it gives us more playing time to prepare those guys for the next year of, sure. of varsity. And you want that step up. I mean, you go from middle school when they have six-minute quarters. 
and you're going from six minute quarters from middle school, you want to step up to the seven minute at the high school level. And I hope they continue leaving it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of people a lot higher in positions than me and make big decisions. And um, somebody puts time and effort in and study and, and doing those things to try to make things better. So um, that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> Remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I suppose you're like every coach. When you mentioned shot clock, they just go crazy uh, in, basket, in high school basketball. Yeah. <laughs> they you know, part of it. It is. And <laughs> I, felt like, um, I felt like the shot clock is used for one reason. That is to speed up the game to make the fans happy. <laughs> um, and as coaches, uh, you know, sometimes we're not there to make the fans happy. <laughs> so uh, we want our style and how we do things. But um, – if it is, it is. We'll, we'll adjust to it and, and do what we need to do to make things better So, um, and, and for our kids. And that's just part of it. Right, but it would, it would destroy the, the type of basketball we play here at Congress Hill, wouldn't it? Well, I guess we just have to play a little bit better defense. And uh, it might be good for us as, as well as we play defense. Their team maybe never get a shot well, at that, That's true, too. It may it, work. It could may be work better for advantage. us, you know. Right. Maybe they'll shoot it more and we'll have more possessions. You know, you mentioned speeding up the game. Why? I've never understood this. Why would we want to speed up a game that we love so much? that uh, <laughs> Get it over with to faster. Get, to get it over with faster. I, I don't want to go home. I, I want to watch more basketball. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Me too. It's all about putting points on the board. They, they love to see uh, they love to see people dunk and shoot threes. And, and that's you know, okay. It's excitement. Defense so. is a lot of fun to watch too. I agree 100%. Yeah. I've heard one of the reasons it's not been a it is because it would be a, another money burden on schools because of the equipment required mm -hmm. and somebody, somebody to, to run it, it yes. operate it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I hear from, from the national people that, that talk about it for the, on the high school level of the shot clock. Those are some of the reasons that they give. So it, it probably is not going to happen, I wouldn't think. And I, I, there are teams that could handle it and there's teams that that couldn't handle it. Yeah. I think it's yes. it's different than at, at uh, Division One college level, where where I think it's worked out pretty well. And when they first got it, I thought, oh, I don't like this, mm -hmm. but it it's okay and mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, it works out. But at the high school level, I just don't think it'll work. No, I don't. I don't think <laughs> I don't think it should be should be put in play. Uh, uh, we have no tall boys on your team this year. Yeah, I mean we got. <laughs> Grant Smith's coming back this year. He's probably pushing 6'5". Okay. Um, um, Dalton Huffman will be back. He's about 6'3", 6'4", probably. Um, good, strong body. Um, Bo Isaac's back. Bo's probably pushing 6'4". Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not big, but it's what we have, and it's what we'll work with. And, well, they I mean, did. you know, we won against one of the best centers in basketball last year in the regional, and, um, and I thought we did a very good job against them for what we had. And, um, you know, and... We'll play. We'll, we'll play with anybody, and we'll be as tough as anybody we play. That's just how we coach, and that's how we'll be. <laughs> okay, and uh, I just say kind of rules when you begin practice. Tell us about that. They... Yeah, the, the, we start November um, 7th. That's the official IHSAA day for or start date for all high school boys basketball. Okay. And um, I think they can start play, um, and I'm not positive on this. We start Wednesday. I think you can start play on that Monday. So what's that, the 22nd, 23rd? I think so. Something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some teams that play that night. I think Richmond might even play that Monday night. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll start then. We'll probably go s scout <laughs> and um, getting prepared for them <laughs> in the season. So. Do a lot of scouting? Yeah, we do. We see every team on our schedule at least once live. And, um, and we keep a great shot chart and everything on every player, especially our sectional opponents for sure. We try to see them. Of course, it's early in the season. You can't go watch those teams live, but we do a good job of it. Coach, we appreciate you taking time to join us here tonight on, on the show. And uh, Sam and I want to wish you and the Spartans the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> Chris Bottomley, who is junior varsity coach at CHS, has been our guest. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of Spartan Sports Report here on TV3.